Hey, today we're gonna to talk about the Hack5 Screen Crab, a man-in-the-middle HDMI adapter that uh, can be used to capture images or videos of something that's being sent to a monitor or TV or something. So today we're gonna to test it out and give it a try. So let's get started. Okay, so I bought this a couple months back and this is my first chance that I've got to uh, really get to play with it. So um, Hack5 released this approximately six months ago and they call it the Screen Crab. And basically what it is, is what you get is you get your, um, your Screen Crab box, which is here, and it has two HDMI ports in it and it's essentially a man in the middle HDMI um, device that will capture either images or video of whatever's being sent through it. Um, it has a micro SD port so that it will copy all of the images or videos that it captures onto the SD port. And it also has a Wi-Fi antenna that allows it to be remotely accessed. Uh, it can also upload the images to uh, a, what they call a C2 server, uh, things like that. So. I thought this was pretty interesting. You know, could you could you put it into a, like a boardroom TV or something like that and capture what is being sent to a TV or projector through this? Uh, so when I saw this, I had some questions. Um, you know, one, how is it powered? Uh, two, how good are the image qualities? And and um, another question I had was. Does anybody notice, like if this is going through the middle, could you notice the frame rate be different or, or something along those lines? And, and probably the most interesting question that I'm hoping to address today is how fast it can the video capture, right? Could you use this, like if you were doing a gaming YouTube channel, could you use this to capture the gaming uh, images? Is the frame rate high enough? Is the resolution high enough? Things like that. Uh, because these are relatively cheap compared to other HDMI capturing devices. So I kind of wanted to learn what the limitations are. Um, so the first thing I'll say is, I answered the power question kind of offline, which is a USB-C power adapter that's here. Now. Uh, it didn't come with the screen crab, so that's a little bit odd. At least if it did, I've lost it, but I don't think it did come with it. And so it's just a USB-C, it takes one amp of power. Um, so you, what I did is I grabbed a USB-C to A adapter and I plugged it into the back of the TV. So a lot of TVs will have a USB port. And I wasn't sure if that USB port would be powerful enough to drive this. Um, for my particular TV, it was. Um, but depending on uh, what the projector TV it is that you want to use this for, uh, if you want to piggyback off of the TV's power, um, you're going to want to make sure it can at least drive one amp. Uh, so that worked. Okay, so I could power it off of the TV. I also used a regular AC, you know, USB-C adapter and that also was able to drive it. Uh, but that's less discreet uh, because you'd have to run a power cable and, and find an AC plug and stuff like that. So you can drive it off the TV if your TV has that power. Um, so that answered that question. One of the things they say is that this is really, really easy to set up. You basically open it out of the box, you pop in an SD card that's formatted properly and it will just work and uh, out of the box it will do a, a, a JPEG image every five seconds. So let's give that a try. I have a micro SD card here. Um, it's a 64 gig micro SD card. I'm gonna format it quick and I'm gonna pop it in and let's see how it works just out of the box, no configuration. Okay, so I have the micro SD card. I'm just gonna pop it into the computer here quick and just do a, a format and then I'll, I'll plug it into the uh, screen crab. And let's just see if it works. I want to see if it starts capturing photos. The other thing that it's supposed to do is um, it's supposed to give the config file. It's supposed to load that onto the SD card. So uh, when we pop the SD card back into the computer after we've run it in the screen crab for a few seconds, uh, we should see the config file. We can start to manipulate the settings on the device. So that'd be kind of cool. So here's um, a blank SD card. Okay, so I have the, the SD card in here. It's really easy to format, just a simple, I'm doing this on Windows 10, but you can do this on any computer. Um, it just has to be extended format, so you'd probably only be able to do this really in, in Windows um, to do it well. Uh, let's grab the SD card here. We say format, make sure it's extended fat, and hit start. We'll go ahead and wipe it. Okay, that's it, I have a 64 gig SD card wiped, so let's give it a try. Okay, so I just hooked up the screen capture device, the screen crab, uh, to the computer, looked um, connected into a TV, so the screen crab was doing a man in the middle. I didn't have any configs or anything like that, I just formatted the micro SD card, put it in, and just let it run. I let it watch a YouTube video, and i just curious how, it, uh, how the pictures are gonna turn out. So it should've taken a photo once every five seconds. So let's take a look.
Okay, so here we can see there's, there is in fact a config file, and we're gonna check that out in a moment, but there's also a folder called loot, and that's basically where it stores the captured images. So if we open them up, we can see here's the full screen of, um, uh, of just the desktop, and we, if we flip through it, uh, let's take a look here. Um, yeah, there we go. You can see it opened up Chrome, I loaded the URL, and then now I watched a full screen video and you know, it's it's doing it every five seconds. So, you know, it's not gonna be, obviously it's not gonna be video level, but if this was in a presentation, like a, if you put this in a boardroom and you wanted to capture the slides that were going across, that would be good. One of the other things that I'm curious about when we actually get to doing the video portion is I'm sending the audio through the device and I'm curious how that will work. Um, one thing I did notice when I did plug it in, uh, which answers one of my earlier questions is, as the user and watching the TV, you know, does the quality change at all? Do I notice anything different? And I don't, like it, I would have no idea that that device is in the middle. Uh, my computer doesn't have any driver problems sending uh, the resolution to the TV. Uh, it all just, just works kind of out of the box, that's great. One thing I'm noticing about the, the photos though, and maybe I'll try to blow this up full screen so you can see it really well. Um, it does have this kind of gray overlay on it. Um, I, I don't really know why it's doing this. Uh, you can see, for instance, like on this YouTube, all that all that background would be white, um, and it, there's a gray over top. So it does have that in the photos. Uh, I don't know if it has in the video, but uh, we'll test that in a second. Um, so the screen capture uh, photos work well that way. Um, but it does have that gray over it. So it's not actually kind of the native photo. So I, I'm curious why that is the case. I might uh, email us to Hack5 and see what they say. Um, so it works, uh, but it does have that kind of, you know, it's not true white. Uh, I presume if you really cared, you could probably just white balance it in post um, and that would fix that, but it does have this gray overlay on it. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the config file because I am curious how we can configure this box. So it automatically loaded this config file up. Keep in mind, I didn't do anything. You know, all I did was format the SD card and throw it in the in the in the screen crab, and the screen crab loaded all the necessary information onto it. So here is the config file for screen crab, and you can see the LED lights are on on the side of the screen crab. I should say there's a multi-colored LED. Um, unit and it's really really nice so uh, it'll give you different colors depending on the mode so I think it's green if it's if it's doing video capture it's blue if it's doing um, uh, just image captures uh, there's a button on the side of it that you can program to do different things uh, which you can see here it says button is easy uh, is eject or it can be off you can see that in your settings down here so you need to set the button to eject the SD card or you can set the button to turn off the unit and so out of the gate when I push that button these are all the default settings it changed the light from um, uh, blue which was doing image recording to a flashing green or something like that to tell me that I could take the SD card out so you can get a lot of information from the unit without having to connect anything to it which is which is nice so um, so these are the default settings it's going to do image mode every five seconds it's going to fill up the SD card as opposed to um, you know one of our options here is uh, to rotate so fill it up means it's basically just going to keep taking pictures until it's full and once it's full it's done um, I have 64 gigs of storage here, so I don't I'm not going to actually test that uh, but it, but if you do have rotate um, Then it will actually just rotate over it So you just always I would override the oldest image with the newest image So basically it'll just store it for as long as possible until you take it out But the old images oldest images will be overwritten by the newest images once the uh, SD card hits capacity um, so that makes sense. Uh, so let's go ahead. I want to try the video mode. So all I'm going to do is just change capture mode to video. And um, we don't want capture interval, but I did want to change the video bit rate. I want to see how high we can actually go. So I'm going to go video bit rate and we're going to go high. Okay, so I've changed the uh, video bitrate here to uh, high. I've changed the capture mode to video. So uh, let's go ahead and pop it into the screen crab and let's see how well the video actually works. And I'm also curious if it, uh, if it captures the uh, audio going through as well. So let's go do that. Okay, so I just uh, loaded the video config into the screen crab and I watched a YouTube video uh, going through it. Um, so let's take a look at what it actually looks like. So I pulled the SD card out. I'm gonna put it in the computer here. And uh, let's open it up. 
So if we take a look at the loot uh, folder, we can see there are some video files, but they're they're broken up into different files. So that's a bit interesting. Let's take a look here. It looks like maybe they're in three or five second intervals. And you can kind of see the video is, is breaking up. I mean, it's fine to get an idea of what's going on, but um, you know, it, you can definitely tell the quality is not as good. So I am curious if we change the video interval to every 30 seconds, will it stop being every five second videos? And uh, I also am not hearing any audio going through it. Uh, however, looking on the TV, it looks fine. Uh, I mean, that, that quality is good. Um, the computer seems to be fine with it, no problem. It's just how good the actual recording is. So let's change the config file here uh, of that SD drive. So we'll take, uh, we'll add capture interval back and we'll change it to every 30 seconds. I'm curious how that will work. All right, let's go give it a try. Okay, so I did the uh, video capture again, this time with the uh, interval uh, set to 30 seconds. Let's see how that worked. So I plug the SD card in, I go to the loot and let's see what the files are here. So, I mean, already the files look bigger, so that's good. Uh, we'll take a look at this one. And they are, it is 30 seconds, so that's, that's good. So that interval does change how long the videos are, uh, depending on what you wanna do. And so you can see in this one, like, you know, when you're typing or doing kind of general browsing, it's fine. Uh, but here I'll do a full screen uh, YouTube. I'll force the audio here. And you can see it's a little jittery. It's not bad. Uh, but if you wanted to use this like as a, as a gaming capture device or something like that, it wouldn't work very well. But if you wanted to, you know, capture what your users are doing um, at their desks or something like that, like if you had something suspicious going on as a sysadmin, um, you, you could do that. Uh, so that's basically the screen crab. Uh, you can do video, you can do uh, images. It works really, really well. It does have a Wi-Fi connection that connects to the C2 server. I'm gonna do a separate video on that, specifically the C2 server, and I'll do an example with the, with the screen crab. It's a really cool way, it basically just Wi-Fi's in, and you can also uh, see the loot remotely, so you don't have to load the SD card, and you can also uh, configure the screen crab remotely as well, at least that's, that's what I understand. I have to just double check that. So I will do a separate video for the C2 cloud and how you can actually do this remotely. This is all physical. Um, so Generally speaking, I'd say it's really good. My only feedback that, you know, if I if I wanted some, some nicer features is to make sure the, the video did in fact record audio. I think that would be nice. Um, also, one thing I tested is uh, the screen crab, if you connect it to uh, you know the source and the destination and you have the power plugged in, but you disconnect the power, so the power drops for whatever reason, um, the video does not pass through it. It has to be operational, has to be powered on for the video to pass through. If it doesn't have the SD card in, that's okay, the video will still pass through, but the unit itself has to be powered on and working for the video to pass through. I kind of wish that, um, and I'm not sure about the components and how physically capable this would be, but if you could have it so that if the power was disconnected, it would just hard failed over. So it's basically just passing the HDMI right through. And then when the device was powered on, then the software would kick in and, and try to manipulate that HDMI to be able to get the capturing devices off. That would be kind of a nice fail safe that if the power's off, the HDMI still works. And if you're trying to do this uh, to an unsuspecting victim, um, they wouldn't know that something's going on there. Uh, but those are kind of my only two wish, you know, nice to haves. Um, so if you want to capture uh, screens or basic video, but nothing too, too fancy, check out the uh, Hack5 Screen Crab. It's a pretty cool product. I'm not sponsored by them by any means. I just, uh, we use this for different kinds of pen testing and experimenting with different stuff. Um, so I would highly recommend trying this out. Um, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. If you want to see more videos of the Hack5 products or uh, of that C2 Cloud, which is also a uh, Hack5 uh, software product, uh, hit that subscribe button. We try to do a video every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern uh, to give you guys uh, kind of all the latest and greatest tech stuff that we're up to. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell if you want to know when a new video is out. Thanks guys, have a great day.